This video is about anime that make me feel alive. Sometimes in life, actually having a life can be pretty hard. Having a depressing job, having too many responsibilities, or maybe just struggling to talk to people. Getting out there and doing something interesting can feel almost impossible. And at times like these, it can feel like life is passing you by. Day in, day out, the same conversations, the same tasks. Nothing interesting, nothing new. You begin to detach from your own life and lose motivation. From the pure monotony and stress of your life. And you don't feel like you're even alive anymore. So how can you solve this problem? Maybe go outside. Build relationships, find hobbies and... No! Watch anime, obviously! So which genre of anime is best for this particular problem? If you're missing relationships in your life, you may think that romance anime or slice of life anime about friends just messing around may help you the most. But it's often other genres where you'll find characters with more meaningful relationships. I think a lot of romance anime have simple relationships. Simple in itself isn't bad, but when it lacks the small genuine moments that build believability, there's a certain fakeness that you feel and it will make you bored and feel less alive. Now, you would think I think romance anime is all about those small moments. And while admittedly some do it well, mainly Kyo Annie with their attention to body language, romance anime like Angel Beats lack that same believability because they don't give time to the small details of character interactions. Angel Beats just has too many plot points in a short amount of time to let anything sink in, or even give attention to smaller things. I think a lot of romance anime like this are way too melodramatic. The amount of romance anime just designed to make you cry without putting in the work is ridiculous. That said, these cheap <laughs> cry anime can help you feel alive. There's something about anime that really lets you open up and cry. I'll go more into that later. <laughs> but crying at anime feels pretty good. Something that One Piece does really well is paying close attention to the small details of relationships. Like with Robin calling everyone by their position on the crew before changing to using their names after they've grown closer. In a Q&A segment, Oda is quoted as saying, It seems that she now refers to Nami by name. The same goes for the rest of the crew. You'll see her referring to them by their names too. After the incident at Annie's lobby, Robin is really starting to open up to the rest of the crew. Even if the stories that occur in One Piece get bigger, I want to continue to draw out these minor, yet crucial human relationships. Throughout One Piece, the dialogue between characters really feels organic because of how it slowly changes. This kind of attention to character building can make emotional moments in a story have an even bigger impact. And it's those moments that make me feel alive. Anime like Gintama and One Piece really make you feel connected to the characters. I think shonen anime are the best for making you feel alive. And that's mainly because shonen anime concentrate anime's biggest strengths. Nowadays, you'll often see Western media take influence from anime. And I think with this, you can see what most of us value from anime. For example, Scott Pilgrim. It takes the fun approach to action, like flying through the air and just other weird stuff. Like coins coming out of people when they die. It's not afraid to be goofy or weird, and I think that's one of anime's strong points. Anime always seems more willing to do weirder things. And I think it's this willingness that attracts people to certain shows. I think some things, Western and Japanese, take themselves too seriously. Where they're not allowed to do anything weird, or maybe it's just the lack of creativity or corporate side of things. But either way, it's anime's balance of earnest weirdness that works really well for me, but only in the good shows. And I've always found that this type of creativity takes my guards and defenses down, and lets me connect more deeply to a show. Like it's not concerned about all this superficial stuff, so why should I be? It's always the perfect amount of serious. And going back to Scott Pilgrim, I love how it handles mature, adult emotions and the theme of change with such a ridiculous premise and such personality. 
It doesn't slow the pace down to a crawl for serious moments or become melodramatic. It doesn't dumb things down, it just presents it naturally fitting in with all the absurdity. Being able to connect so much with a story because of its weirdness and not being taken out of it when something serious happens, that's one of anime's biggest strong points. Other strong points are obviously the amount of expression anime allows, and kind of exclusive to shonen. I think physical fights are a great way to create a sense of danger or obstacle in someone's journey, emotional or otherwise. It allows for a lot of hype moments where the swelling of the plot and animation and connection to the characters make you feel alive. Continuing with Shonen, it's the initial simplicity that really works for me. The main goals of the characters are really easy to get behind and understand. Luffy wants to be king of the pirates, they want to be good at volleyball. It's these types of motivations executed by excited and hardworking characters that can really get you going. And like with the weirdness, it's that easing of the entry to emotional connection. I feel like there are more barriers to connecting to something with different medias. Like live action, there being a real person on your screen, you think you'd be able to connect to it more, but it's actually the opposite for me. Societal pressures and stuff all go out the window when it's not a real person. For the same reason we don't get emotional with people we just met, live action can make it harder to bring emotion out of me. Shonen simplicity can also help make you feel alive when the show digs deeper or creates a really in-depth and intricate plot and world. And because the barriers are already down because of the initial simplicity and weirdness, the emotions and thrill of things hits way harder. I think sports anime also works like shonen battle anime. I think it's just the way anime presents physically pushing yourself that really resonates with me. But ultimately, an anime can make you feel alive regardless of genre. And I think that's because of these three things. Happiness, awe slash cool slash hype, and sadness. For me, these are the three types of cry that anime can induce. And they all make me feel alive. And obviously they can overlap and stuff. Scale is also something that can affect how much an anime makes you feel alive. Shows like One Piece where the locations get more and more exciting and the world just gets bigger and bigger. Slowly increasing the stakes and size of the story is a great way to make an adventure feel real. But if you start in a boring area and work up to more exciting things with the characters, it really makes you feel alive. That's why Jojo Part 3 was so compelling. Its slow pace makes it feel real and makes you appreciate the more exciting moments towards the end, and reaching the goal with the characters. And I don't think you would have that same payoff and rush of excitement if it didn't build up to it properly. But god is Jojo Part 3 boring. But not all anime have to be such large-scale stories to make you feel alive. Beck is a great example. Its focus on the quiet things in life and its slow development of characters and relationships creates a glorified version of reality that makes you excited to be alive, and the lives of the characters almost seem achievable to you. Beck also has a unique strong point. It's music. The mispronunciation of English words in the songs creates a unique sound that just connected to my soul. Sometimes it isn't that deep. All you need is a really good song to make you feel better. And when you see the creation behind the song via a down-to-earth cool story, it makes you like the song even more and you connect it to certain scenes that are important to the characters. Beck feels so real and I think that's because it respects its audience. A lot of its story is shown visually instead of verbally, and its reliance on body language is what really sells its characters to me. It feels so real and makes me feel alive. There's a scene in Beck which I think really demonstrates how good it is. This scene. I was full, couldn't let myself to go, even though I feel the end. Where we're shown all the small details of the scene, the attention to the small things builds the atmosphere of the scene and makes you feel like you're really there. The anime isn't afraid to take its time and really let the tone of the scene and environment sink in. And it leads to one of the best scenes in anime. And it's made even better by some of the most satisfying sounding singing. And it being a big part of a character's relationship. 
It all culminates in you feeling chills down your spine and feeling truly alive, like you're experiencing this special core memory that the characters are creating. Some anime struggle with pacing, focusing too long on boring things. And while this scene may sound like that, it's not like they're focusing on these things to drag it out for easiness. All these small things are given effort and are at a perfectly balanced pace. And similar to Jojo Part 3, its slow pace makes the payoff of these moments much greater. The only difference is that Beck is is never boring. If you want to escape your own life and feel like you're experiencing someone else's, Beck is the anime. It's one of the only anime where I was completely invested and absorbed, and unfortunately I have been struggling to find anything else that captures those same feelings. But I think I might be overcomplicating this. Sometimes all you need to feel alive is great music and visuals, and the perfect example of this is Makoto Shinkai's films. I mean, they really speak for themselves. They're breathtaking, and that's another thing that's unique to anime and animation. It's impossible to have scenery this beautiful in live action, and with Radwimp's music, it's enough to make you feel alive. I remember the first time I watched Garden of Words. There's something so special about the visuals in this film that really leaves me speechless. Without even a plot they make me feel alive. I guess humans just really like pretty things, and these scenes have been perfected to hack that part of your brain. I think everything I've talked about can be linked to motivation. Anime can be extremely motivating. Looking just at the surface level, visuals like Shinkai's really just motivate you to live. I think a large majority of people live pretty boring lives, if not depressing ones. It may sound simple to just go out there and live, but it's so easy to get caught up in the struggles of life. It can be hard to live with the daily grind, but for me, seeing so many beautiful stories in anime motivates me to push on and feel excited to be alive and seek out my own experiences. But anime is not a solution to all problems. It's a great tool for motivation and escapism, but ultimately life needs to be faced.